So, um, rather than getting straight into tweening with the mesh geometries, I want to take a look at another handy tool or interesting tool in PuffFish called uh, the Voxel Mesh Tool. Now, the Voxel Mesh Tool basically lets us quickly create pixelized versions of any mesh geometry we might have in Grasshopper. So I'm actually going to go ahead and start with a mesh sphere. Um, I might make its radius about 100, so it's a bit bigger. And we'll give it a U and V count. We want it to be a bit high because the voxel mesh component relies on lots of vertices. So if we go and deconstruct uh, that mesh, oops deconstruct mesh, you'll see we get lots of points. Basically, if we drag that to a lower res, you don't have as many points. So for the voxel mesh, it's usually better to have lots of points um, in that. Um, the voxel mesh component should just be under the mesh tab. Uh, it's right there, so we'll click on that, voxel mesh. And we see the kind of inputs it's going to take straight away. Um, let's make the X, Y, and Z sizes all regular. So I'm just going to make them 10, 10, and 10 like that. And then the points are going to be these guys, and by default it's going to snap to the XY plane. Uh, what we can easily do though is we can kind of manipulate that axis. In fact, I might just quickly show you what that's looking like. So it's creating like a pixelized version of our um, geometry here. You could, you know, view it a little bit more easily with a custom preview. There we go, now you can see it a lot more clearly. Um, preview that guy off. And Basically, as we kind of, you know, increase the number of points, we'll be able to close off a lot of those holes that we're getting in the geometry until we get um, a more closed off, pixelized version of our mesh. Essentially, what it's doing is it's taking all of these points and trying to create a cube or voxel around of it, so you get this pixelized version of the geometry at the end. But as I was saying, we could also try and manipulate that base plane. So I'm going to create an XY base plane. And I'm going to rotate based on an axis, um, so rotate axis here. And the geometry we're going to rotate is that XY plane that we have at the start. I might just preview this guy for a sec. Uh, my XY plane is pretty small, so I might just make my preview plane size a bit bigger. There we go. And we can go ahead and change that guy to degrees and just rotate based on you know a 360 degree angle. And, you know, as we rotate that plane, it will actually rotate how our voxelized mesh is applied. So I'm going to preview this back on. Oops. Preview on. Plug this plane in here. And you'll notice as I go and rotate this, you can create your voxel mesh um, at any kind of angle that you like based on a plane. And it'll still go ahead and compute uh, where that base mesh is. Uh, so that's kind of a brief intro on how you could use that voxel mesh. Um, another potential way to do this if you're starting with a geometry that isn't as you know controllable based on its vertex count is you could populate the geometry um, like this um, by basically placing that in and maybe giving it a count of like 2000. This is a really slow component though, like you'll see when I plug that in that it takes a little while to compute, but that could also serve as the starting point. So if you wanted to put a custom mesh type in here, you could use that populate geometry. So we might group that and we'll label that as voxel mesh. Uh, 